coming up next oh my gosh yes it's it's time for for a little bit of blazer time and we're gonna learn about building hybrid apps with blazer with with dan roth hey where's dan dan there Hello, he is. Gosh. hybrid apps does that mean that these apps are gonna run on both gas and electric <laughs> uh maybe maybe now, a little quite. native a little web actually fantastic i will give you the the uh stream all right thank you jeff it's great to be here everyone hello my name is daniel roth and i'm a program manager on the asp.net team and in this session we're going to take a look at building cross-platform hybrid apps with dotnet and blazer Blazor is a web UI framework based on .NET and C Sharp uh, instead of JavaScript. .NET has had great support for building server rendered web apps for a long time with ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core. But previously, if you wanted to do anything in the browser, well, that meant writing some JavaScript. Blazor enables you to add client side functionality and interactivity to your ASP.NET Core web apps using just .NET no JavaScript required. With Blazor, you can use your existing .NET skills and code to do full stack web development. Blazor is based purely on open web standards and works in any modern web browser, no browser plugins required. Blazor is part of ASP.NET Core, your modern web framework for .NET. ASP.NET Core comes with everything you need to build beautiful web UI and powerful backend services. The addition of Blazor to ASP.NET Core expands the reach of your .NET web apps to the client. There's no need to rewrite your existing ASP.NET Core apps to take advantage of Blazor. You can add Blazor components to your existing apps while preserving exi existing functionality. Getting started with Blazor is super easy. You just go to blazor.net and install the latest .NET SDK. You can then develop on your platform of choice using Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac, or Visual Studio Code. Let me show you how easy it is to get started with Blazor. All right, like I said, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to blazor.net, and that'll bring you to the Blazor homepage. Click on Get Started and start going through the tutorial. Download the .NET SDK if you don't already have it. Create your first Blazor app, and you should have it up and running in less than five minutes. Really, really easy. Now, I've already done these, these steps, so I'm going to go ahead and move over to Visual Studio. Let's create a Blazor app. So let's click Next. That looks like a great name for a Blazor app. I'm going to create a Blazor WebAssembly app. This is going to run on WebAssembly in the browser. And yes, let's have an ASP.NET Core backend for our app. And while we're at it, why not make it a progressive web app too? We'll select these two options. Let's go ahead and create that. Uh, Visual Studio will now go ahead and generate this project for us. And there we go. I'm going to let that settle. And then let's go ahead and run it so we can see what this app looks like. While that's running, let's look at the, uh, the structure of this solution. This middle server project, that's our ASP.NET Core backend. That's where our web APIs and uh, server hosting logic lives. This client project, that's our actual Blazor app. That's the part that's going to run in the browser. That's where all of our web UI code lives, our components. And then down below, we have a shared project with code that we can share between the client and the server as is. All right, cool. Looks like this popped up on my other screen. Let me bring it over and let's put the uh, side by side with Visual Studio. OK, so what do we got here? We got some tabs. We can tab around. That's all client side routing. Blazor is intercepting those navigations and routing to the correct component. We've got a little home page with just some static HTML. We've got the counter that we can click the button and the count goes up. And yes, when I click that button, C Sharp and .NET code is running, no JavaScript. And there's no page refresh happening here. Uh, to show you that that's really the case, let's go ahead and find that counter component. It's this counter.razor file. Let's open that up. All right, and uh, let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. So here's that button for the counter. It's got an on-click handler, which normally that would point to JavaScript, but here we're pointing to a C Sharp method. Every time we click the button, it's in, uh, incrementing this uh, uh, C Sharp field, and then the component re-renders. To see that that's really happening, let's set a breakpoint right there. Let's go ahead and click, and boom, there we just hit our C Sharp code. We can hover to inspect. This is code running client-side in the browser. Super cool. All right, we'll go ahead and continue that. 
Now, Blazor is all about reusable UI components. Each one of these Razor files that we saw, those are UI components, um, and they can handle UI events. And we can reuse these UI components in other parts of our app. Let me go ahead. I'm going to stop running in the debugger. I'm going to restart this app without the debugger so I can make some fast iterative changes. Let's go ahead and pull this to the side again. And let's do it like that so we get Visual Studio back up. There we go. OK. And what do we want to do here? Let's go to the home page of this app, this home tab. Let's see if we can add a component to the home page. There's already some components there. We've got normal HTML. But then we have this survey prompt component, which is this gray box. Let's add another component. Let's see if we can add a counter right here on the home page. I'm going to add it using this uh, tag syntax. That's how you um, create components. I'm going to save. I'm not going to do anything else. And you'll notice that Visual Studio is detecting that the app has changed. I don't know if you saw the little animation in the tab. And it refreshed the browser for me. Super cool. That's an auto rebuild and auto refresh in the latest version of VS. Now we have a counter component on our homepage. So UI components that are event-driven. You can create libraries of reusable UI components. We can also do data binding, where we bind data from our UI uh, to C-sharp code. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add some C-sharp code to my homepage. I'm going to add a code block. Let's just def define a string variable, a string field. Okay, And then up above, we're going to add a div here. And let's add a, an input and a p tag. And we're going to render the value of that text field, that text variable right there. And get some nice intelligence. OK, let's save. Watch for the little boop, boop, boop. There it is. The Visual Studio detecting. It's refreshing the browser for me. All right, great. So we got our text field. It's uh, Let's add a little bit of styling just so it's not right up against our button. We have Bootstrap included in the box. So um, let's set some margin on the top and give it a little space. And that looks good. All right. OK, so now, while that's refreshing, what I want to do is whatever I type into that text field, I want it to be bound to my string. So to do that in Blazor, we can do at bind, and then let's specify the variable we want to bind to. Again, we get lovely IntelliSense. Let's save that and wait for the refresh. And there it goes. OK, and let's type hello.net conf. And I'm going to hit Enter. The on change event fires for that uh, that text field, and it binds to our string, and then it renders on the page. Now, that's not exactly what I wanted. I really wanted it to uh, bind with every keystroke, and we can do that too. Let's change the event that we're using to bind using at bind colon event, and we'll and, and by default this will do on change an on change event. But I want it to do it on input on every single keystroke. So we'll save that, let it refresh again. There we go. And now when I type hello.net comp, every single keystroke, I'm getting my, my UI updated. Awesome. OK, so that's a quick introduction to, to Blazor. Notice also that because I selected that progressive web app option, uh, Edge is detecting that this app is a PWA and that it's installable. So we can go ahead and click Install. And Windows has some great support for PWAs. And now there's our Blazor web app. Uh, hosted inside of like a native shell. It's still a web app, still running on WebAssembly, actually. It's got the same functionality that we saw before. Let me type in here. But now it's got more of a native app look and feel. We can even go to the Start menu, and there it shows up on the Start menu so that we can run it from there. Um, you can make these apps run offline. Uh, really great uh, uh, support for PWAs. OK, now this is a very simple app. It's, it's just a default product template. Let's take a look at a more involved application. I think we can go ahead and close these. Yep. And then let's go to Car Checker. OK, so this is a, a more involved solution. This is an app that would be used by like a car attendant at a car rental company to receive cars that are being returned and take the mileage and uh, the, the amount of gas that's in the car and if there's any damage. I've already got the app up and running in the browser right here. Uh, Car Checker has got authentication. We have built-in authentication support in Blazor using uh, ASP.NET Core identity. Let me go ahead and log in. And no, don't remember that password. All right. Then we can search for our, uh, our car by license plate number. We get this uh, autofill uh, search experience, all implemented with C Sharp. None of that required any JavaScript. And then we've got this nice responsive UI. It works on small screens, works on big screens. 
Uh, we can type in the new mileage. I don't know, let's say it's now 600 miles and the tank was three quarters full. If I put something ridiculous in for the mileage, we get uh, validation of our form. We have built-in support for forms and validation. Let's put it back. Now this looks good. We got this cool 3D uh, uh, rendering on the side. This is actually done with JavaScript. This was done with 3DJS. And this is showing that if you want to use some JavaScript in Blazor, you can. There's JavaScript interop uh, capabilities so that you can reuse your existing JavaScript libraries if you want to. Here, we're using a fairly popular 3D rendering library. And you can like select things. Let's, um, let's add a note for this front wheel. Add note. Uh, let's say that the meal was uh, completely missing. It's not even there. We'll, let's add a photo so that uh, we can show people that what, what happened. I don't even know how the I don't even know how the person drove that back to the lot. And then we can show all the notes, and there's our new note, and it's turning red to let us know that the note has been added. All right, so we can then save that, and we're good to go. So that's slightly more uh, feature-rich uh, Blazor application to show you what's possible. All that was done with just C-sharp, no JavaScript required. All right, let's go back here. Great. Now, who's using Blazor? Well, uh, Blazor is a relatively new web UI framework, uh, but it's growing in popularity fast. It's one of the fastest growing .NET workloads. Uh, the Postage is a startup. Um, that uh, provides a service for helping you manage your end of life concerns, um, like giving access to important documents and accounts to your survivors after you pass away. Um, they built their entire web app using Blazor, and they built their mobile app using Xamarin. This enabled them to take the, the same engineering team and have them work across the stack on the back end and on the front end. And they say this resulted in a great cost savings. They estimate that it cut their development cost time uh, in half. We also use Blazor uh, internally at Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft. Microsoft Endpoint Manager is a product for enterprises to manage uh, devices. And they built their new Community Hub UI using Blazor. Community Hub is a place where IT admins and IT pros can go to share scripts and reports and other management objects uh, with each other. They host their Blazor UI on Azure, and then they surface it, they render it in their WPF client using a Blazor WebView control. Another great example of uh, usage of Blazor is also on the, the .NET homepage. If you go to this uh, live TV link, that brings you to this .NET Live with lots of great videos about .NET. This is all implemented with Blazor too. All right, but speaking of this, like embedding a Blazor app in a WPF application, uh, that begs an interesting question. Uh, what if, for your scenario, um, what if building a web app is insufficient? What if you need more than what the web platform offers you? And you require full unfiltered access to the client device's native capabilities. Well, .NET has many great options for building native client apps. But if you're a web developer, one compelling option might be to build a hybrid app. What is a hybrid app? Well, hybrid apps are native apps that leverage web technologies for their functionality. For example, a hybrid app might use an embedded web view control to render web UI. Uh, this means you can write your app UI using web technologies like HTML and CSS, while also leveraging native device capabilities. For web developers, building hybrid apps has many benefits. You can reuse your existing web development skills. You can reuse your existing code. Uh, you might even be able to reuse your entire web app uh, to build native applications. You get full access to the native capabilities of the device, uh, including using native UI elements together with your web UI. Now, not every app needs to be a hybrid app. Uh, but for many scenarios, the hybrid model can significantly reduce app development time. You can build hybrid desktop and mobile apps with .NET and Blazor. Blazor hybrid apps combine all the benefits of the web, native apps, and the .NET platform. In a Blazor hybrid app, your Blazor components run natively on the device. They don't run in the browser, and WebAssembly is not involved. This means your Blazor components run fast, and they have full access to the native capabilities of the device through the .NET platform. Your components then render to an embedded WebView control 
through a local interop channel. Now we've been experimenting with building Blazor hybrid apps for a while with the Mobile Blazor Bindings project. Mobile Blazor Bindings uh, enables hosting Blazor components in a Xamarin Forms app. Your Blazor components run natively on .NET using Xamarin and have full access to the native functionality to native functionality through .NET APIs, including Xamarin Essentials. Your Blazor components render to a WebView control provided by the underlying platform, and you can add native UI controls too. The Mobile Blazor Bindings project is currently experimental, but it informs much of the work that we're planning to do for Blazor hybrid apps in .NET 6. All right, let's take a look at building hybrid apps using the mobile Blazor bindings. All right, so to get started with uh, mobile Blazor bindings, you're going to want to go to aka.ms slash mobile Blazor bindings with hyphens in between. And that will bring you to the GitHub repo for the project. You just scroll down a little bit. There's a section on getting started. Go ahead and click on the docs link, and that will bring you to the mobile Blazor bindings docs. Uh, then you can click on Get Started, and this will walk you through all of the prerequisites that you need to install. You'll need the .NET SDK. You'll need to install also the mobile and web workloads uh, for Visual Studio. Once you have that, you can then install the mobile Blazor bindings templates, and you just need to run this command. So you just copy, and then you pop open a command prompt, copy that in, and go ahead and run it. I've already installed these templates, but it doesn't hurt to install them again. All right, great. And then to create a project, you just do .NET new Blazor hybrid. That's what we want to create. And let's call this Blazor hybrid app one. OK, and that creates pretty quickly. Looks oh, like it's done. All right, then we can open that in Visual Studio. I've already got a Blazor, Blazor hybrid app uh, project here open in, v in VS. Let's go take a look at this solution. So we've got a few more projects. This Blazor hybrid app uh, project, that's the, the core of the app. That's where all of my UI logic lives. And then below, we have all of the platform-specific projects for mobile and desktop. We've got Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows. This is all based on the uh, Xamarin Forms technology. OK, um, this is a .NET Conf focused on Windows. So let's go ahead and run the Windows version of the app first, see what it looks like. And it popped up on my other screen. Let me bring it over. There it is. OK, so this is a native Windows app. It's actually using the WPF backend for uh, Xamarin Forms, right? Uh, and it's rendering uh, web UI. So uh, at the bottom here, we can see our uh, this is our default Blazor application. This is HTML and CSS all rendered using Blazor components. This is just an embedded browser control, a web view in this WPF app. And then up above, we actually also have some native UI, like native controls uh, from, from Windows. OK, let's go look and see how is, that, how is that done. So in Mobile Blazor bindings, you write your code using Razor. Uh, here we have some uh, components that are native controls. These, these will look familiar if you're familiar with the Xamarin Forms controls. We've got a content view and stack layouts, and a native label, and native button. And then down here below, we have a Blazor web view. This is what's going to render that web view control. And then everything inside is Blazor web UI. Here we have an entire default Blazor app uh, rendered as a single component inside of here. Where's all that code? Well, if we go over to the, the solution and, not, and look in this web UI folder, here's all of the code from the default Blazor template just embedded into this native application. Right. And uh, to show you that this really is you know, web UI, we can actually even put like a, let's put a, some HTML in here. Let's put an H3 header and say, this is a web view. Save that. Uh, let me bring up the app before I close it. And let's save and run it again. Probably going to pop up on my other screen, is it? Yeah, it did. Let's uh, bring it back over. And there we go. So there, this is a web view. So that's HTML being rendered into our um, native application. That's that's a flex layout. So then it pops up to the top. We've got a nice responsive layout because we're using Bootstrap. So yeah, that's actually a hybrid application. Uh, so that's cool. Now, of course, we can do uh, mobile as well. It's not just uh, desktop apps. Uh, it wouldn't be the mobile laser bindings if it was just uh, just desktop. So let's go and select the Android project as our startup project, and we'll run that. Get those both up side by side. I've got the Android emulator here. 
And there it comes up. And there it is. Okay, this is a web view. So we've again got this hybrid UI mixture of native and, and web. Now we can click the button and the count goes up. Both those apps have that functionality. We can also go into the Blazor part of the app and find the counter. And notice that the counters are being kept in sync. They're sharing state. We do that in the desktop app as well. How is that? Whoop, that's not what I was meant to do. Wrong button. <laughs> there we go. So the counter is going up. How is that accomplished? Well, if we look at the way this counter is implemented, it looks a little different than we saw before. Instead of just incrementing a field, we're using this counter state class, which is being injected into this component to share state between the native UI and the, uh, uh, the web UI. Yeah. So there's a mobile using our web application. Obviously, this is a very simple app. This is just the default template, but we can we can do better than that. Let's go back to Car Checker. Uh, here's the Car Checker solution, and let's expand this clients folder. You notice that this has been ported to use a mobile Blazor bindings, and we've got a whole bunch of, of, pro of projects here for uh, mobile and desktop, as well as web. This project was actually uh, put together by a community member uh, Jan William uh, Spau, I think is his, how you pronounce his name. And here's his repo where he's got the code. Make sure you select the Mobile Blazor Bindings uh, branch. But uh, thank you, Jan William, for, for contributing this, this sample to the, to the community. Um, all right, so let's see if we can run our Car Checker app as a Windows app. All of the Car Checker UI is in this shared library. Right over here, you can see there's all the pages and there's all the, the components. And that shared library is being used by all of the other platform specific targets. So let's go ahead and run the, the Windows app. OK. And let's get this a little smaller so we can see things side by side. And it's exactly the same UI. This is a WPF based application now. And we can search, and we can see our car, and we can see the, the wheel that was missing. And it's got the, the image and everything. So there, we just ported our web app to, to desktop. And similarly, we can do the same thing with mobile. Let's go ahead and select the Android uh, application. Let's start that up. All right, and go to the Android emulator. And so we got desktop, we've got web. Web, there it is. And now we've got mobile, all three. Yeah, cool. So we can do things like, let's go into the mobile app. Let's find that car. Let's set the mileage to, I don't know, 610. Let that, good. Let's go to, let's update the web app version. Let's find the same car again. And see is the, yeah, the mileage is set to 610. Yeah, so desktop, mobile, and web, super cool. Now there's something missing here because, I mean, this is a web app that's been packaged as, a, as native apps, mobile and desktop. It's not actually using any native functionality yet. Uh, what, what could we do to light up some, some native features? Uh, well, I thought it would be fun. There's a, a, a native feature of Windows that I thought we could use that we could light up. Um, let's see. Let me go into my index page for this application. In this main container, I'm going to light up a, a Windows feature. There we go. So if, if we're running on Windows, we're gonna, I've, I've written a little component here called uh, Format C Drive. Uh, so that's over here, this .razor file. Here's what the code looks like. It's just a button that, when clicked, we'll call this uh, format C method. And we've got a little bit of uh, pinvoke logic here to call this native API something in shell 32 that some dev told me was a really great API to use on Windows. Uh, so let's try that out. Okay, so let me let me save save this. So we've got that, and I think I'm gonna let me select Windows project. Let's F5 this time. So we got it in the debugger. Uh, well, maybe I need to close the. Let me close this one. Yep. And okay, cool. Now we've got our WPF app back up and running, and it's got this awesome new button right here. Now, just to make sure you know that this really is running, I'm going to set a breakpoint right on this call, right before we call it, and we're going to click Format C. Okay. So now we are one breakpoint away from calling this API, and I'm pretty sure that this will be fine. Um, but if it doesn't, I'm sorry. And you know, it's great talking to you all. But let's go ahead and continue. <laughs> I'm still here. Okay, that's good news. And this native dialogue just popped up on my other monitor. Unfortunately, it didn't pop up on this monitor. But uh, apparently, you cannot format the uh, system drive uh, where, where Windows is on. So it did call it, though. So we are doing some native logic. All right, so there we got our native, uh, oops, native Windows app. We got mobile. Uh, 
and web, all uh, a Blazor hybrid application. Pretty fun. All right. So we are hard at work already on .NET 6, including on the much anticipated .NET multi-platform app UI. .NET MAUI is the future of cross-platform for .NET. With .NET MAUI, you can build a single app that runs on mobile and desktop, Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac OS. It's the evolution of Xamarin Forms with an improved architecture and development experience. .NET 6 will also include support for building cross-platform hybrid apps with .NET MAUI and Blazor. Right now, the mobile Blazor bindings project, which is experimental, that's using Xamarin Forms. In .NET 6, we're going to productize that work and, and run it on .NET MAUI. .NET 6 will include a Blazor WebView control that you can use with your .NET MAUI apps. Uh, in .NET 6, your Blazor hybrid apps will run anywhere .NET MAUI runs, although our primary focus initially will be on desktop scenarios. Uh, be sure to try out support for Blazor hybrid apps, hybrid desktop, app, desktop apps with .NET MAUI uh, in upcoming .NET 6 previews. It should be available in the, the next few months. So in summary, uh, Blazor enables you to build full stack web apps with .NET and C Sharp. For web developers looking to go beyond the web uh, and access native device capabilities, hybrid apps are a great option. Support for building cross-platform hybrid apps with .NET MAUI and Blazor is coming in .NET 6. Be sure to check it out in one of the upcoming preview releases. And with that, I will turn it back to Jeff. Hey, oh my gosh. Love all the great Blazor stuff. Always, always learning something new. I love seeing mobile Blazor bindings mashing up there and, and working so well with, um, with desktop. My gosh. It, being able to share, was that just, you just took all the Blazor content and just shared that project right into the other projects? Yeah, literally the same Blazor components, the same same project library was being used by all of those target clients, uh, Mac, Windows, iOS, and Android, exactly the same code. That's pretty cool. Let me go, I have a couple questions here for you over in on the, uh, on the tag board. Let me bring them up here. There we go, here's the first one. One of the reasons I avoid JavaScript in the front end is fear of exposing my IP and security. Will any of the C Sharp embedded in Blazor apps be visible to a person hitting F12 developer tools like we can see JavaScript? Yeah, this is this is kind of a new thing for .NET developers. If you're a JavaScript dev, this is this is how it, things work. You download JavaScript to the browser, and anyone can see that code. Uh, with Blazor WebAssembly apps, that is also true. You're downloading DLLs instead of just raw C Sharp code, but anyone could try to decompile them. They can certainly look at those binaries and inspect them. So you should assume that code being shipped to the browser is effectively public. If you have code that you don't want to do that, then keep it on the server. And in fact, there's a different hosting model for Blazor that we call Blazor Server, where you can keep your components server side and just interact with the browser over a real-time SignalR connection. In that model, you get the same interactivity and feel of a front-end app, but your code never leaves the server. So that's a good option if you if you have code that you don't want to expose to, to the, the whole world. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You have choices between those. There's a couple more questions here. We're just about out of time. Questions about difference between Blazor WebView and WebView 2. Blazor WebView will use WebView 2 when you're on Windows. So that is the browser control that we will render the Blazor components to. Uh, Blazor WebView is just a way to take Blazor components and render to that WebView over a local interop channel. And the last question, can Blazor render WebGL? In Blazor, well, WebGL is just a web technology, right? And Blazor can do anything that browsers can do. You can call into any browser API, um, norm, normally through a .NET API, although sometimes you may need to use some JavaScript interop to do so. Often there are helper packages that create C Sharp wrappers, like .NET API wrappers, to, to help you do that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. Really appreciate you joining us as part of .NET Conf Focus on Windows. Thank you for having me. All righty. We'll catch you later, Dan. And I'm going to get ready to bring on our next speaker.